from the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But before then, you know, the Holy Spirit, part of the, you know, the, the Trinity, God, have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit works in wonderful ways in our lives. And we, uh, Brother Emmanuel read a few of those things that the Holy Spirit blesses our life with. And I have six of those points uh, very briefly that I want to make. So um, the Holy Spirit is the one that leads us, says as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That's how we know that we are Christians. When the Spirit of God says witnesses with our spirit that we are his sons. says we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we can cry, Abba, Father. The way we can call on God, our Father, is through the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God that moves in us and uh, helps us to call on God. That's how we know that we are Christians. You know, when we pray, and we pray, if you experience this no doubt, when you got saved, you pray and, you know, you get up, and, you know, if you didn't get saved, it's something you wonder, did I get saved? Did I not get saved? But when we get saved, we know we got saved because God's Spirit lets us know that you're right with God. There's a deep sense of peace, of assurance that God gives us in that moment when he saves us. And that's the Spirit of God that works in us that way. The next thing uh, that the Holy, the Holy Spirit does in us, it says in Romans chapter 5, verse 5, that the love of God is poured in our hearts by the Spirit of God. You know, we appreciate God's love. God loves you. God loves me. God loves all of us. God loves the world. And he gave his only son for the world to, to, to be saved. But the Spirit of God takes that God's love and pours it in our heart, meaning that it makes us love others just like he loves others. And puts that love in us. That's a tremendous work. It's a miracle from God when he puts his love within us. The Holy Spirit does that. The Holy Spirit dwells with you, as Brother Emmanuel read, and shall be in you. When we get saved, the Spirit of God is with us, as we read. You know, he, he helps us at that conversion. But he's also along with us for, for the rest of our spiritual walk. He sanctifies us. Uh, and uh, he's part of in that work also. But it also shall be in you a promise of a deeper blessing, the, be, the blessing of the, Holy, uh, of the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. He shall teach you all things. Uh, he will testify of Jesus. Uh, he will reprove the world. It's the Spirit of God that convicts, convicts the world of God's truth. Yeah, it's not our words, but it's the Spirit of God that does that, and we're thankful for that. What does the Holy Spirit do? Jesus says, he will glorify me. So when, God, when the Spirit of God moves in our lives, it's not to bring us the glory. It's not to put us on a pedestal, but it's to glorify the Lord. Amen. That's the work of the Holy Spirit, to glorify Jesus and our Heavenly Father through our actions and through our way of life. The Holy Spirit also helps us, Romans 8.26 says, in our infirmities and in our weaknesses. It says we don't know how to pray oftentimes, but it's the Holy Spirit that, that teaches us and helps us in our prayer life. Oftentimes, if you've been, you know, prayed, and you prayed, and you feel oh, kind of dry or kind of empty or maybe, you know, weak in prayer, but then, you know, you persist and you continue, and, and here comes a gift of grace, God's grace, and you feel his presence lifting you up, and you get close to heaven. That's the Spirit of God helping us in, the, in those times of prayer, and we definitely appreciate that. It says, we don't know how we ought to pray, but it's the Spirit of God that makes intercession for us with, with groanings which cannot be uttered. Another thing that the Holy Spirit does uh, in, uh, in the Christian, 1 Corinthians 12, 4, says there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. The Spirit of God equips us, gives us spiritual gifts, and enables us to serve the Lord better, to serve the Lord as we should. All of us as Christians have this promise. It's not just for the few. We might look and I'll say, oh, and Brother Mark talked about this a little bit at, uh, at our Zoom Bible study about uh, the ones who received five talents, the one who received two talents, and the one who received one talent. 
It's not the, uh, the number of talents, it's what we do with those talents. And it's the Spirit of God that gives them to us, but it's up to us to use them and to allow His Spirit to work through us. The other thing the Holy Spirit does today in Revelations 2, 7, says, let him, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. The Spirit of God still works in the church today. And we need his power and his presence this day even more than it was needed in the past. The days are dark, it says. But we need God's power through his spirit working in the church. And the Holy Spirit is all that. We're thankful that we're not alone on this. He says, I will send you a comforter. It says, Jesus says, I will not leave you comfortless. That word comfortless in Greek is orphan. Orphanos. He says, I will not leave you without a parent. You know, Jesus was with the disciples back then. But when he was going to the Father, he said, I'm not going to leave you alone without anybody, but I will send you another comforter. That word comforter means one who walks alongside with us. An advocate. It can also mean an advocate, a counselor. One who intercedes for us. That's what the Holy Spirit does for us. We're thankful for all of these blessings. It's the Spirit of God's presence in our lives. But the main focus I want to do for the rest of this a time here this morning is talk about the promise of the Holy Ghost power upon the, uh, the holy, uh, saved and holy, sanctified people, which Jesus mentioned in this passage that I read here in John chapter 7. It says, he spoke of this, of the Holy Spirit, of the Holy Ghost, which was not yet given. Obviously, the Holy Spirit was at work even back then. Zechariah talks about, he was filled with the Holy Ghost and he prophesied. John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Ghost. So people did receive an infilling of the Holy Ghost even prior to this time. But now when Jesus was going back to the Father, he would send the Holy Spirit upon many people, upon the church, upon anyone who believes, right? And has uh, met uh, the requirements that the Lord has for that. So let's talk about that for a moment. The promise of power. Acts 1, 8 says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be my witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. Now, who was this promise for? Was this just for them back then? No. Peter actually makes it very clear. At the end of this message, he got up and he said, this here, this promise, what you see, this experience that you see here, this promise is to you, those who hear my voice, Peter was saying, and to your children, those who are not here maybe yet, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. The Lord called us to this walk. Today, in this modern life, 2,000 years later, God has called us to be followers of him. And this promise of the baptism of the Holy Ghost and power is for us today. For us today in the same fullness as they received it. In the same fullness as these original uh, disciples did receive. And we thank God for us. Remember, he said, I will not leave you without comforter, but I will come to you. And I will bless you and fill you with this power. So the power of God, you know, this is the work of God. It's, you know, the spirit, the, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's the work of God in, in people's lives. And we've experienced already, if we are saved, we've already experienced God's power at work. Because it's by God's power that our lives were changed. We didn't change ourselves. We didn't just become better people. We didn't go through a program that helped us be better. Those are all good things to help us improve in life. But the change in heart is done through the blood of Jesus. Amen. By the power of God. Uh, Romans 1.16 says that we are not ashamed of the gospel. In this modern life, there are a lot of views out there in the world. But we as Christians, we're not embarrassed. We're not ashamed of what it means to be a Christian of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
We're not embarrassed to tell my friends at school or at work, hey, I'm a Christian and I believe in the Bible. Because it's the power of God to salvation to anyone who believes. God changes lives and we thank God for that. God's power changed our lives when we became Christian, but it also continues to work in our lives today. God just doesn't just save us, show us his power then, and leave us on our own. No, his power is our work daily in our lives. The Spirit of God works in us daily. First Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18 talks about the Spirit of God being in our life. Where the Spirit of God is, the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. Freedom from bondage. Freedom from the chains of, of sin, of captivity. We were once captive to the pleasures of this world, but Jesus freed us through his blood. And the Spirit of God that is, that is with us gives us the liberty to live for him. But it says not only that, but we are with an open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. In other words, even as we live day by day, it says the Spirit of God works in us and produces in us something to God's glory. Day by day. In other words, if I can change this, we're going one step higher every day. A little bit higher each day. By God's Spirit, we're made to be conformed to His image. We thank God for that. You're a special work. God's workmanship, it says. You and I are like God's masterpieces. Ephesians 2.10 talks about you know, people go to a museum, like to look at an art piece or look at a cathedral building. We call those art masterpieces. We as Christians, as God's masterpieces, better than Madonna or whatever you call that, uh, Leonardo da Vinci's painting, famous painting, right? And we're not on a wall. We are living masterpiece continually changing. God's works in us in a wonderful way. We're God's masterpiece. God's power uh, works in us. So he works in us daily. Not only does he work in us daily, but he's given us promise of power for service. And we thank God for that. He also provides for our needs. You know, God's power, uh, Philippians 4, 19 says, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. So God's power is not only for our spiritual needs, but also for our everyday needs. You need something? Go to the Lord in prayer, and he will answer. Need healing? First of Peter 2, 24 says, by his stripes we are healed. God's power is available today for all these answers, for even miracles in our lives. And we thank God for that. Uh, I'll read you a little story about power, and we all appreciate power in lives. Without power, without electricity, where would we be? And think of that for a moment. Uh, but anyway, there's this story about this uh, young missionary. His name was Herbert Jackson. Uh, he was given a car to help him in his work. So the car was a major asset, but it had one difficulty. It would not start without a push or a jump start. So Jackson devised a system to cope with the car's inability to start. When he was ready to leave his home, he went to a nearby school and asked permission to bring some of the children out of class to help him push start his car. Great system that he devised. Imagine if you had a car like that. Anyway, throughout the day, he was careful to always park on a hill or to leave his engine running when he stopped for a short visit. For two years, this young missionary used what he believed was an ingenious method to enable him to use the car. When poor health forced his family to leave the field, a, missionary, a new missionary arrived to lead the mission. When Jackson explained to the missionary his methods for starting the car, uh, the new missionary, the young man, opened the hood and began inspecting. He said, why, Dr. Jackson, he interrupted, I believe the only trouble with your car is this loose cable. He gave a cable a twist, pushed the switch, and the engine roared to life. For two years, this missionary, Dr. Jackson, had used his own devices and endured needless trouble. 
the power to start the car was there all the time. It only needed to be connected. And that's how it is with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And promise of power in each one of our lives, each one of your life. We think we've devised a very good system like this man. We can do all these things. And yes, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit is with us. But what God promises is to all who God has called. Meaning it's not just for a few. It's not just for those who will become ministers or workers, so-called workers. But it's for all of us who are called to be followers of the Lamb. So the question for us today is like, like the question that the Apostle Paul asked the disciples he visited in the church in Ephesus for the first time. As he was traveling in his journeys, he would stop at various places where the Jews were gathering in synagogues, preach the gospel. When they didn't receive it, they went to the Gentiles and so on. So he, he goes to Ephesus, and the first people, disciples he meets, he asks him, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? That was the question he greeted them with. So that's the question for us today, too. Have you received the promise of the Father since you believe? Because it's for all of us. Uh, or are you devising your ingenious method of serving the Lord, but not without being connected to the full power? It worked for him. It worked for that guy. It caused him some you know, unnecessary issues, but it got the job done. But why do that when you can be connected to God's power? And that's what God has for each one of us, right? I mean, we know that power is very useful, right? So I have a phone, right? And you can see it's turned on, right? Because it has power. It's not connected to anything physically, right? It, even though so we understand that. It doesn't have to be physically connected, but it's got a power, right? The power is in the battery. And, you know, I've never done this before. And I don't want to mess up my, my phone, but uh, it's got a battery on the back, right? That's its source of power. Right? Without that, it wouldn't do very well. I know you didn't shake in your head, but what happens if I take this out? The battery is gone. The power is gone. Can I use it? Or I can just use it for not even a prop, right? I'll put it, I'll put it on later. There you go. Now, you get the, 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 the picture, right? I mean, yes, we're not like that cell phone without any power because we still have the Spirit of God with us. We're more, the, the more apt illustration is this one with the car. But, you know, why go through that trouble when God's promised us the Spirit of God? It says, if you then, uh, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them to ask Him? It's not that we're asking for something bad. We're asking for something good. God will hear us when we do that. Brings me to the, uh, the next portion and the last part of the message here. How do we receive this promise that God has given to all of us to receive his power from above and fill our house? How do we receive this? Well, we must be saved, obviously. We, you know, Emmanuel read that the, the world cannot receive the spirit of God because they don't know him. So first we must be saved. But then also we must live a righteous, holy, and obedient life. We must be sanctified and live a holy life, right? We just don't, we don't want to just check that off. Oh, I got sanctified, but, you know, live the way we want to. No, we must live righteous, holy, and obedient lives unto the Lord. And when we do that, God will help us with the next part of it. We receive the Holy Spirit in prayer, right? Right? It, it's through prayer. That's how we communicate with God. That's how we converse with God is prayer. Now, some of you maybe say, well, I've been seeking for the baptism of the Holy Ghost for a long time. I haven't received. I have a story which I read. I listened, by the way, to one of those services. I mentioned the 100-year anniversary centenary of uh, the centenary of a Romanian apostolic, uh, apostolic, but Pentecostal work. We do have some churches in Romania, too, apostolic. But um, uh, so this guy talked about uh, how uh, a, a young person uh, received the baptism of the Holy Ghost after praying for eight years, right? So, yes, we pray, but we persevere. We don't just pray once or twice or three times or a week, and it doesn't happen. But no, we persevere in our prayer. We continue praying. We don't give up. 
right? God has a work and a plan in our lives, and at the right time, God will send the blessing. We heard the Sister Joyce mention how God answered her prayer that one day, right, God sent the Spirit and filled her with the power. Well, this young woman, uh, she had been praying for eight years, and there was this group of young men who uh, had gone to a church service around New Year's time frame. Maybe it was a New Year's uh, service. It wasn't clear on, on, on that, but it was some, some service, and they were traveling back to their hometown. It was late in, in the evening, after midnight, late, uh, early morning, and they were the only car driving on the road from the city to their home. They went going over the mountains. The mountains were, you know, with snow, looked beautiful. The sky was clear. The stars were out. It was a crisp, clear evening. And as they were traveling and going back, somebody had the idea, you know, hey, can we stop for a second and just to, you know, stretch our legs, get in some fresh air, enjoy the, you know, the mountains, the scenery, the way it looks like it was dark, but they could see the snow and so on. So, okay, so that, that's a good idea. They, they got out, stretched their legs, breathed in the fresh air and enjoyed it. And somebody came with the idea, you know what, we're out here, all five of us here, whatever they were, uh, we're out here, why don't we have a little prayer and thank the Lord for what he's done for us, for the fact that we had a great service, this, this uh, past service, and for us being here for this beautiful scenery, for a beautiful, quiet atmosphere. So they said, sure, that's a great idea. They started praying, and not five minutes passed, and the young woman received her baptism with the Holy Ghost. She'd been praying for eight years, and here she was out there, somebody just had an idea. You know, God has a perfect plan in mind. So our part is to persist in prayer, to persevere. God will give us his promise at the right time. And we thank God that he does that. It's not us who's doing it, but it's the Lord who fills us, and we thank God for that. So we receive the Holy Spirit by being saved and sanctified in prayer, by persevering in prayer, but also by faith. Uh, Galatians 3.14 tells us that we receive the promise of the Holy Spirit through faith. We thank God for that. God is well able today, right, as we discussed, to fill us with his goodness and mercy. Going back to the passage in John chapter 8, it says, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. We do need to have that need, though, right? We do need to have that thirst. And may the Lord help each one of us uh, for more, to, to have that hunger and thirst for more of him. I appreciate Sister Joyce mentioning that we need re refilling. It's not enough just to have received God's power and experience the baptism of the Holy Ghost one time because he's not just a one-time God. He's not just in the past. God is the God of today, Amen. the God of the present. He does the same thing work today. He can fill us, renew us, uh, you know, bless our hearts and lives today with his spirit and power He'll help us each and every day. We thank God for that. Thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost upon us believers who trust in him. He will, he will answer and, and he'll show you his power in ways in everyday life. And whatever it's needed, God will answer and we thank God for that. We'll have a time of prayer here this morning. 382 is the song. Please come forward and have a time of prayer.